Howdy, howdy, Legends. It's everyone's favorite professional Apex Legends and caster and analyst, Zephyr here, back for another video. Now, we've all experienced the frustrations of lag or poor FPS in a video game, be it Apex or another, but in a fast-paced shooter like Apex, every single frame can make the difference in a close fight. So, let's dive into some tips, basics, and key settings to maximize both your FPS and make sure you aren't lagging in-game. But first, our question of the day. If you could delete one weapon from Apex forever, which would it be and why? Input lag. First, let's look at input lag. First of all, what do people even mean when they talk about input lag? Put simply, input lag is the time it takes for your monitor or TV to perform the action or input from your external device. So, for instance, how long from you pressing shift until you see yourself start to crouch in game? A lot of this is controlled by what hardware you are using, and most monitors and TVs will have a very clearly marked input time, which will be rated in milliseconds. These days, as monitors have continued to improve, most gaming monitors will have 1ms input time, which is about as good as well we'll ever really get, and certainly fast enough that it is not noticeable. Equally, mice and keyboards also have input time, but again, even pretty mid-range wireless keyboards and mice have next to no and noticeable input lag these days. If you are on pretty old hardware, it might be time for an upgrade if you really want to reach the top of Apex Legends. For you controller users, there is a pretty crucial game monitor specific setting for Apex Legends. For some time, Apex has had a significant problem with using a controller at very high refresh rates. Anything above 144 Hz can cause pretty disruptive input lag for controller players. For that reason, lots of the best controller players like Guild, Imperial Hal, and Jen Burton keep their FPS locked at 144 Hz, even if their monitor supports a much higher refresh rate. Do keep an eye out on if this issue has ever been improved or addressed if you're coming back to this guide at a later date, though. Looking for a leg up in Apex? Pro Guides has everything you need to supercharge your gameplay to the next level. From detailed in-game knowledge and guides to specialist coaches, whatever your gameplay needs, we've got you covered. Why not sit down with an Apex Predator and get direct feedback on your gameplay? Perhaps ask them for their tips and tricks on how to reach the next rank in Apex. Check out the link in the description and let's go! Network Settings now, let's look at actual in-game lag, where your game does not have a good connection to the server that the game is being played on, and your game feels choppy or, in the more extreme cases, you're rubber banding around and unable to even really move in the game. Now, we have to be honest here, Apex servers can be, well, trash. Sometimes your connection to a server is just awful for no reason. If you can, try to Alt F4 on PC and rejoin the game, and sometimes that can fix the weird packet loss desync issues that players sometimes have. Of course, it can be your internet as well. The first port of call is always a speed test. Try something like Fast.com. If you are seeing anything in the double digits, then you are absolutely fine for online gaming. If the number is way below what you're used to getting, check that you aren't downloading an update or something, or anything else that's super intensive in your location. General tips to maximize your network connection are simple. Always use a good wired connection where you can, and when that's not possible, make sure you have a good router and strong Wi-Fi cards. Modern Wi-Fi can plenty handle online gaming, but wired will always deliver the fastest and most consistent performance. Ping is also not always a lag issue either. It is natural to have higher ping to servers further away. Of course, if your speed test shows unusually high ping or you have consistently bad ping to local servers, that could also be an issue. Sadly, sometimes network issues can be really complicated to fix and require an internet engineer. There isn't really any in-game fix for lag if it is a result of your internet speed. In-game performance. Now, let's look at in-game performance, and while not technically lag, a poor in-game FPS can make the game feel really laggy, choppy, and generally frustrating to play. There is a reason why pro players want to eke out every pop 
possible extra frame per second and we are seeing modern gaming monitors go all the way up to 360 hertz but what does the monitor have to do with it the refresh rate of your monitor known as hertz tells you the maximum number of frames per second that your monitor can display so, if you have a 144 hertz monitor, you don't need to try and get 300 frames per second in game. Make sure you know what refresh rate you're working with before we dive into this section. You can check either by looking up your monitor or sometimes there's a big flashy sticker letting you know on the monitor. Also, check your display settings, right click on the desktop, display settings, advanced display settings, and check you are at the right refresh rate and the correct resolution. Now that we've checked that, what are the principles? Of course, for everyone's performance is different. Depending on what sort of hardware you're running, your PC can totally impact what capabilities you have available. If you have a super 4090 beast PC, then you aren't really worrying about performance at all. Whereas some people much have more budgeted PCs. Of course, if you are on console, you might as well look away now because you have literally no control over any of this. Quickly, before we dive into how to maximize your frame rate in game, let's look over why a higher frame rate is so sought after. Firstly, having a stable refresh rate is gonna make the game a lot easier to play. It can be very disruptive or distracting to have random choppy moments or even FPS so low, you're basically playing a slideshow. But what is the difference between 60 hertz and 140 hertz or potentially 240 hertz? Even the new standard of 360 hertz that's becoming easier to access. It is all in your aim and movement. The higher frame rate allows for much smoother aim and movement, especially on mouse and keyboard. This isn't just limited to the top level either. Even average players will notice the difference when upgrading their refresh rate. Of course, there is a limit. Improving your aim in an aim trainer such as Aim Labs or simply grinding Apex is key. You can't just buy a better monitor and become the GOAT of gaming overnight. But we all want better FPS, right? So let's start with the basics. Do you meet the minimum requirements to even run the game? If your PC isn't equivalent to these next specifications, then you're not going to be able to run the game at all, sadly. And next, the recommended requirements. If you don't meet these, then you'll be able to run the game, but it's gonna be pretty difficult to get a solid experience. Now, let's look at the average use case. A typical player on a mid-range PC who has an 144 hertz monitor, you're wanting to maximize your frame rate. Really, the way to achieve this is simple, turning down graphic settings. Some pro players play on literally minimum settings to maximize their FPS, but there is a sweet spot. You want to be able to hold down your target FPS, which the maximum FPS on your monitor can support. So for an 144Hz monitor, 144 frames per second. And by hold down, there should be almost no occasions where your FPS drops below 144, except maybe potentially the dropship. There is no point in turning in all your settings down to a minimum if you can find a middle ground. So let's run through some key settings. Don't turn down your texture trimming budget even if you want to go to the minimum settings. This setting controls how much of your graphics card memory is dedicated to Apex. Lowering this can actually make your performance worse. Some good settings to turn off are volumetric lighting and dynamic spot shadows. Volumetric lighting has a pretty noticeable impact on GPL load and it can actually harm you in game. Ever looked up and been blinded by the sun in game? Especially with so many Valkyrie ultimates in the game, not being able to see the sky clearly can actually be a hindrance at the cost of lower FPS as well. Take the time to test out the settings then find your sweet spot. And remember to make sure you know your monitor's refresh rate. That concludes our Apex Legends FPS and Network Guide. Do you have an extra tip for Apex players? Share it with us in the comments down below, and until next time, Legends.